local people have lost them. Whoever came to a standstill in Kampala, George was a consultant. He could give assistance. It is regrettable. Indeed. Mm. Okay, now uh, to the people of Kidongole and being the Kiso, I want you to give them a warning or an advice about the trending pandemic, COVID-19. COVID, pan uh, COVID pandemic is real. It has come and it is attacking the community, people, not animals. So if you have to understand that you want your life, please just be vigilant, control yourself, you don't need to be pushed like an animal. Let us understand that is real. Like now, there are restrictions. People are not supposed to enter the burial home, but they feel it is bad. But those ones who have managed to enter, it may be a risk to them. Those ones who have stayed out, it, will, it may be safe for, a, a safe for them. That is the message I can give you. Thank you so much. Maybe there is the other thing that we wanted to add in. Yeah. About people, because I see in most cases, people are fearing police other than fearing COVID. The COVID when they see the police, they run. But when police are not there, they gather. I think let people learn from this experience yeah. and uh, take upon themselves and see that uh, they are secure from this uh, pandemic. Right. Uh, okay. That is it. Uh, what I wanted to, to add on. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we are still hearing from many people, and uh, for now, I just want us to go and see what is really taking place around the home, the process of, uh, of the arrangement of people. Coming back. Of Papa George uh, uh, Opio at the late. Actually, we can see people are here and uh, people are trying their little best to social distance. I am very sure everybody is on a mask here and uh, just like we are seeing uh, it is really a hard trying moment for this home and uh, that's why I want to tell everybody out there COVID-19 is real. Let's try whatever we can do to make sure we control the pandemic, we prevent the spread of the pandemic. As you can see these are all the, uh, the, the grand people actually of this home now, we may not speak to all of them, but uh, they have all come here to share with, uh, with the family for this trying moment. And of course, I, I want to take you through one of the cousins of the late. And uh, as, uh, as I'm seeing, uh, he's also around the place. There are children, there is also family and friends uh, right here. And uh, I want us to just hear briefly from the cousin. Uh, just briefly from the cousin of the late, and we shall hear what he knew about the late, uh, or maybe the best experience he had with the late, or maybe what kind of a person was the late exactly. And uh, I want to speak at the same time, he is the managing director of Voice of Teso 88.4. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning to you, sir. Our names? Abilan Abubakar is my name. Okay. And maybe title? Um, the, my title is I'm a general manager, voice of Tesla. Okay. Uh, today, being in this compound for this trying moment for the late Papa George, uh, we wanted to hear from you what kind of person is that you knew about Papa uh, Opio George. Uh, first of all, I would like to, to, to thank uh, the management of Voice of Tesla for linking up with the uh, Emuria TV. Um, I'm a born of this place um, from here, Kidongole. And uh, the late uh, George Opeo Ochom is my cousin brother. I can't have enough words to describe his personality because this was a man who was down to earth, he was a man who loved almost everybody. Whenever he could come around, it was his behavior to move around the village. He goes supporting different families. And whenever he comes, Actually, you, you, you find the whole of this compound full of people coming with different uh, problems, different needs. They come seek for support for school fees for their children, those who, are, who want to go and get uh, advanced medical attention. He supports them. When you're in Kampala and stranded, once you get him on, on, on phone, he immediately supports. This has been a, an extremely generous gentleman. He has been supporting.
almost everybody and the entire Kidongo knows that uh, he has been such a very resourceful and developmental person. He has supported quite a number of individuals who are even not related to him. Wow. Uh, looking at what has really taken Papa's life, I want you to pass a message to the public about this trending pandemic, COVID-19. One thing to note is that uh, uh, COVID-19 is real. It is real. It's claiming a number of lives. Our own dear one has left us. I appeal to the public to take care. Let's mind about ourselves. Let's adhere to the SOPs. When we are told, please uh, put on face masks. When we are told, wash your hands regularly. When you are told, distance yourselves. It is not uh, going to, 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 to help the government that has uh, instituted uh, the SOPs, but it is actually an effort to save our lives. Let's all, let, let everybody make sure that uh, we adhere to those SOPs so that we fight uh, COVID-19. And then number two, uh, it's also where, where our scientists have, reflect, uh, have, have informed us that uh, the usage of uh, lemon, usage of um, uh, ginger, and then hot water, we should always keep on taking those, uh, uh, those fruits because it's really important. Mm -hmm. And according to what science have, have, have confirmed to us, with our sisters, that they, they help to boost the immune system in order to fight COVID-19, just in case Mother, you, uh, you, you, you as you heard that it. day when we were bearing Christy. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, That's that why that uh, school is named uh, Mother Magiri. Uh, the story like she went through. The body. Sleepless the nights she went through. I'm seeing Staying the in an empty stomach uh, in order to see the family grow up. Okay, uh, but when now, she starts uh, harvesting the fruits of her children, to children to start disappearing like a blowing wind. I don't know where God is taking us. I don't know whether there is a debt who have not paid we will request intervention of church such that we are given the true meaning of what is happening. If it is God's liking, then that is the way to go. Yeah, we will give glory to God. So permit me to introduce Toto Kedakiana-chan, Toto Nyober. Let her just raise up her hand. Uh, she can't, she can't. Sincerely, when we got the information yesterday, I got the information at around 9. 9, nine to 10. And uh, I, I, I started fi figuring out of how to convey the information to her. I wrote to Bukedia. Now, on my coming back, God gave me wisdom and told me, use her brother. I came and picked the brother and told the brother of what had happened. But he had already got wind of it. So we went together. To the bin and fun enough, someone goes to post in social media that my mother died having had the death of her son. And that's how we today, the educated delight, use social media. I will handle that person. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Toto has got her sisters. Can the able sisters stand up? These are the two remaining sisters of Toto. And incidentally, they are, they are age mates. Their age mates, I don't know whether the generation is going out. Now when when can I say can I can I see Uncle Opolot? Where is he? Alfred? Can just just raise up your hand. That is so he's one of us. Yeah. Permit me at this time to show you the family of late Opio Jude. I will not mention the names 
but I want all of them to come and or, or, wherever they are, not the mother, but the children, can they raise up their hands and greet the mourners? Raise up your hands. Can you come here, the children? Come. Can you come here? Can the children come here? I love Rhoda. Rhoda has taken my profession. I thought I would die without someone taking over my, a copy of my pen of gold. But there is someone to take it over. There is someone to take over my criminal procedure. So if you are joking, she will prosecute you. Can you stand? Yeah. Just look at the generation of that has been left behind for me to take care of. Just look at that generation. This is the generation I cannot even start asking for five shillings. Very young. Very, very young. These are the children. To the red. Church, these are your children. I have special tribute to these children here. And then lastly, you say, Atwanaba Mojomoda. Konye, Angeta Kinyong, Amunura Nesula Konako Kampala, Irotunle Jokuna. Stack of Mother Majeri, the Rotarians, George's friends from Kampala, I wish you good journey masses. Keep praying for this family, keep giving parental advice and visitors at any time. God bless you. Have safe journeys back home. Thank you. Yalamat Noe. What's up? Gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for coming to share with us this last moment with Dad. I've come here to talk about Daddy's journey. From the time he fell sick up to the time he died. Daddy fell sick on the 27th of May 2021. He was not feeling well. He woke up that day feeling very funny. And he's the type of person who really feared the COVID. So he called me and told me to call the nurse that usually comes home to check us. We called the nurse very early in the morning. She came, took his test. Then he went to the hospital. He was thinking maybe we'd be having some malaria. He was checked. They got him with some malaria. After some few hours, the nurse calls us and tells us that he's sick. We didn't know how to break the news to him, waited for him to come back home, and we told him. But the funny thing is that he was not shaken, he was so composed, and we started taking him through the treatment for COVID. We went to the hospital, bought all the medication, and told him to steam. He was really dedicated. He kept steaming each day, and that he was getting better. You'd feel, you'd, he would tell you, don't worry about me, I'm going to be fine, and you'd really see it in him. So we could not lose hope at that time. After some few days, that his breathing became so bad, and we had to rush him to the hospital. That was on 2nd June. We called one of his close friends and told him how he was feeling and he was advised to go to the hospital. We went did the scan and that was admitted at Mulago. Uh, we got one of the nurses to get in touch with and that was doing extremely well. He was saturating well. His oxygen levels were high. Actually, he was saturating at 97, 98. He was doing very well. 
After a period of four days, I heard from the nurse that he had been taken to ICU and he was not doing well. We prayed, fasted. Sometimes he would get his phone and tell you, Brother, be strong, I'm going to be fine. How are your sisters? Take good care of them. I'm going to come back home soon. So we had hope. Every single day we'd wake up, go to the hospital, sit there the whole day to wait and hear from the nurse. And we never would hear from her we'd go back home satisfied because we knew everything was going to be fine. So every single day, imagine how someone wakes up like as though they are going to work. For us, we'd wake up to go and sit at the hospital. We'd go check for him food, sit the whole day up to seven, and then go back home. So that's how our days were. Not until 11th, when dad called me, he was telling me, he first told the nurse, he told her, tell her that to be strong. Tell her to hold on, tell her to be very, very strong. So I kept asking the nurse, is that fine, is that fine? She told me, no, he's very stable. Don't worry. So I kept having the hope that uh, on 12, very early in the morning, we made for him breakfast as usual. Went to the hospital. I still asked the nurse, how did my dad sleep? She told me he's circulating well. That is fine. So, after that, Brenda, can I continue? Uh, let me continue from where I already stopped. Uh, so on 12th, like she had said, we met, we, we continued the program as usual. We went early in the morning, we had taken for him. Uh, let me. We had gone early in the morning. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, just yeah. if you uh, the widow and the children all the front of the child, we hope you are well from different people. We appreciate the rest that are there, but we are not going to call you here. We are going to just congratulate them and we have seen them. Thank you. We need to test the children, just one child, someone just the rest, and this photo is moving. I hope the man 
Okay, just one question. What is that one thing you cannot forget about uh, the late Papa Opio George? George has been a very good, good person in there. Let me say not even Kidongol alone, entire Teso. And we have really missed a big breadwinner in Kidongoli. He has been supporting everyone. Kidongol has missed a person I can't even express now. We have really missed a good person in our community. The entire buke, buke, Teso. This has been a key person among, yeah. uh, among the people we know in Teso. Some young people, yeah, that is true. He has been a great person. So, well. wh what do you think there will be? What life is that after all this, after Papa has gone? What do you think? What is the next step now as a family, probably, or the people who live around him? We want to pray God to comfort this Kidongole. Because George has left a very big gap which can't be filled. It is only God. So we are praying God to comfort us in Kidongole because this is the head of our community. Wow. Now the head has been gone. We pray God to comfort us. We, 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 can't, we can't even cover this gap. I so our, our trust we are now putting to God to help us to comfort this community. That is what I can only say. All right, thank you so much.